things may seem to be worse than initially thought in the Connor Bedard injury situation. We now know what under what he underwent in the past few days since the injury and what his timeline may now be. We also have some positive stuff in this video to try and get us over this little hump of being without Connor Bedard for the next few weeks. So we're going to be talking about all sorts of news for the Blackhawks in this video. Before we get into it though, 83% of you guys watching right now are not subscribed to the channel. So if you want to join us on the road to Macklin Celebrini, you're in the right spot. Hit the sub button. The support lately has been absolutely insane. You guys have been crushing it, and uh, we're looking forward to keep it going throughout this season. But we're going to start it off here, obviously, with the big one. Connor Bedard has an injury update. Like we had, uh, we're initially told on uh, Tuesday that we know today what the updates were. Uh, he underwent jaw surgery, and now is estimated to be out six to eight weeks Um now opposed to four to six what we initially thought now we didn't really have an actual timeline apart from just what we heard from you know luke richardson him saying when he broke his jaw he was out four to six weeks and whatnot and that's kind of the, the average timeline that we've seen from broken jaws and uh, you know previous nhl um players and eras but charlie romilios came up with this earlier Connor bedard underwent successful surgery to repair his fractured jaw and is expected to miss approximately six to eight weeks however a lot of people were uh, replying to this tweet, you know, a lot of people were commenting on the whole situation that this is a long time to be out with a jaw, a broken jaw, fractured jaw. And, you know, it, it certainly is, although, you know, this kid is something special and you don't want to rush him back in any situations. Now, obviously, you want him to get back as soon as possible, but it's also a, a heavy risk knowing that a hit like this could come again. You know, this hit was not dirty. It was simply the wrong place at the wrong time, reaching for a puck when someone was going for a hit, and you've seen what happened with it. So, this is pretty common in the NHL, very unlucky for, unlucky for Connor Bedard that it happened to him. Uh, so, I can definitely see the Blackhawks wanting to take their time with him as well, uh, you know, make sure everything is fine before he does officially come back. Now, this could also be uh, a latest possible return date, and that's what my hopes are. You know, you don't want to see him out too long, but you want to make sure everything is clear going into uh, his return you know you don't want anything to still be loose or messed up in the jaw and get another hit to the head and it come and it comes out that it it injured it again and it's worse at the time you know you want it to be fully structurally sound i guess you could say uh this also means though he will be missing the all-star game which is super unfortunate you know a lot of blackhawks fans a lot of nhl fans were excited to see him at the uh the all-star game the skills competition my, my hopes were kind of there that he would still come and do the skills obviously but there's no hitting or nothing you know i i really wish he would but it don't seem like it but that means that the blackhawks now have an open spot for another uh all-star so that means you know they're gonna someone's gonna get voted in someone's gonna get put in whatnot and uh here's from our twitter make sure to follow if you haven't already be post uh, all types of Blackhawks and NHL news on there, uh, breaking news and stuff that if you might not be able to watch a video, you can get us there, see it, and you, uh, you'll have it right right in front of you. Um, Connor Bedard, like I said, six to eight weeks. Bedard's also set to miss the NHL All-Star game and the skills competition, meaning their new representative. Now, there's plenty of options the Blackhawks could go for. You know, although the Blackhawks haven't been performing as good as they wanted to this season, they've had a lot of ta individual talent that has been absolutely fantastic. You know, Peter Mrazek, Jason Dickinson, Nick Foligno... We have a pick, you know, me, Nick, and Noah. We kind of were discussing this uh, after the fact that Bedard was out. Who could the All-Star be? And I think Jason Dickinson really is the option, as you can see here. We want Jason Dickinson in this All-Star game. He has been absolutely tearing it up this season. He's already passed his uh, career se high in goals, or season high in goals, excuse me. And he's nowhere nowhere close to finishing the season. And he could have, you know, a career. He's on pace, He and he will have a career year. Let's not get this wrong. Uh, he's going to be there. I really want to see him in the All-Star game. Hopefully, you know, learning from a lot of players, like I said, that what would happen with Bedard, a lot of good talent there that you can learn from, you know, just watch and get to talk to, and this is a perfect opportunity for Jason Dickinson. Maybe do some recruiting as he's there as well. We never really know, but, uh, you know, obviously it sucks that Bedard's out, but we do have a few good news, uh, good, good points in this video that hopefully can lighten the mood. Hopefully that, uh, you know, it'll put Connor Bedard to the side for now and while he's out for the few weeks. But we have some potential huge roster moves coming. Now, we know the Blackhawks are so injured. And it's not it's not even funny at this point. It's starting to get healthy again. starting to get a bit better. But they are still down so many players. And the roster move that we have here could be Nick Foligno, Seth Jones, and Sam Savoie could be returning to the roster soon. Now, obviously, Samuel Savoie has not played yet. He had a, uh, I believe it was a broken femur or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was, but he has a chance to make a season debut coming up soon. Seth Jones, 
Hopefully, we'll be back soon. And Nick Felino, the same situation. You know, fractured finger. You want him back as soon as possible. Three guys, I think, would make this team incredibly, incredibly, you know, like, I don't, I'm lost, I'm not sure what the word is, but, you know, they're looking forward to having these three players uh, come to the roster, two of them coming back, one to make a season debut. Uh, Samuel Savoy, third round pick, has not played an NHL game yet, but he played very, very well in junior. And uh, we definitely be a great addition to this very uh, depleted Chicago Blackhawks team. Seth Jones, it's about time we have him back. You know, the team's been playing well. Seth Jones, though, is noticeable when he's not out there. And we've seen that throughout his absence. Same with Nick Felino. Nick Felino is the unnamed captain of this team. You definitely want to uh, have those guys back as soon as possible. They're the leadership of this team. But, you know, everybody on this team has been doing a very good job to hold it down while they have been out with injury and whatnot. But if these guys can come back... You know, within the week, we've seen Seth Jones may play tomorrow, next game. That's what uh, what we've been seeing, although it's not confirmed or anything. Uh, it would be an absolutely massive, massive, massive addition to the uh, to the roster in the NHL. But um, obviously, no rushing anybody in. I've been saying it before. You can't rush anybody in. There's no point of rushing anybody in. Um, you're not going for wins. You're not trying to make the playoffs. So make sure everybody's at 100% before, um, you know, you can bring them back into the roster. There's no re-injury risk. Uh, that's the main thing. You don't want to have another injury situation like this later on in the season. Um, that would just be absolutely detrimental for, you know, the whole team, the fans. But fans have been absolutely packing the arena. It's been awesome to see, even with the absence of nearly everybody on this team. Let's let's be quite honest here. There hasn't been very many NHL players on the NHL team for a long time. So the fans have been doing absolutely amazing. Uh, Fill in the burn, and you love to see it. But we have one more topic here tonight, which is another very, you know, a very nice one to see. Something that... We have uh, we haven't talked about it in a while, but the major prospect news, and that's uh, it's nothing you know super um, you know important to the team, but it's definitely important to this player in specific, and that's Ethan Delmaster, who's been named an AHL All Star. Uh, very very happy for him, very good for him, and uh, a well deserving addition to the AHL All Star game. He's been playing excellent this season in uh, in Rockford. Seventeen points in thirty one games. Left handed defenseman, six four. Um, I'm a huge fan of Ethan Del Mastro from the Canadian World Junior Team. That's where we saw him in 23 and uh, the 22 tournaments. Um, you know, the points may not show, obviously, he's a defenseman, but he was such a, a solid lockdown defenseman. Has a good offensive upside as well, as you can see from his junior history. Um, but it, it's a very good addition to the AHL All-Star game. Hopefully, we can see him in the NHL soon. You know, the defense is, uh, is a department where we don't have too many injuries, which is you know, thankfully, we don't have too many injuries. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, knock on wood, but uh, Ethan Delmastro, I'm very excited to see what he can do in this All-Star game, what he can do for the rest of the AHL season. I don't see him making an appearance in the NHL this year unless it's maybe at the end of the season or, like I said, if an injury gets uh, out of hand once again, but he will be a very solid addition to the NHL team when the time comes, you know. Um, like I said, I liked watching him with Team Canada and the World Juniors the past few years. Um, he's just such a smart solid defenseman and it's something that the Blackhawks will absolutely take advantage of in the next uh, next season or whenever they bring them up you know um, you know their defense is in a very awkward spot right now they have a lot of people that they could lock down or they might let go you know there's there's a lot of players that are going to be uh, in the unknown territory of this team so Ethan Delmaster I think will be a big part of this but whatever it may be uh, I don't know, but, you know, it's a good sign that he's playing well in the AHL, doing well and everything, but, uh, you know, the Blackhawks, they're they're in a bit of a weird spot. We know they're in a bit of a weird spot. They're playing well, not getting the wins. I guess kind of what you want, you know, you still want one of them top picks, uh, like we discussed in yesterday's video with the prospects, that even if they don't get the first overall, there's still a lot of good options, so make sure to check that one out if you haven't, but it's all I got here for this video. If you did enjoy, make sure to give a like. Make sure to subscribe to the channel as well if you want to join the road to uh, Macklin Celebrini. Maybe even not. You know, maybe they get a guy like Caden Lindstrom or someone like that. A lot of fantastic options that we'll, we will be talking about, um, you know, over the next few weeks and months until the draft. So hit the sub button if you haven't already. But that's all I got. I'm signing out. Hope you have a great day. See you later.